Thank you very much <clears throat> for that uh, introduction. Uh, it was so extensive, I thought it might be an obituary. I was looking for my, <laughs> I was searching for my pallbearers. I'm very honored and I want to also congratulate the 2020 sages, the 2021 sages, and uh, particularly want to express my appreciation to my nominators and supporters that provided me with this opportunity. I'm here tonight uh, with my family and uh, some special friends, and I want to express my appreciation to my family. Uh, my co-honoree is really my wife, Dorothy Hockenberg, and I have my children, uh, Marnie, Thomas, and Edward. Edward's here with his wife, Lisa, and uh, their, her parents, John and Barbara Miggs from uh, Kansas City. And I'm especially privileged to have uh, former ambassador, former governor, Terry Branstead here with me, uh, Attorney General Tom Miller, and possibly a, a late arrival. Really, I feel that I want to congratulate two special fearless freedom entrepreneurs who are my hero and my heroine. The first, my hero, was mentioned in the introduction, my grandfather, Meyer Hockenberg, who in 1881 uh, escaped Russian Jewish persecution, came to Des Moines, was outfitted with a horse and wagon, and sold housewares to Iowa farm families. Uh, and, succeed, and was successful in bringing his father, his father, his mother, seven brothers and two sisters to Des Moines. His wife, my father's uh, mother, died at an early age and he came to live with me as part of our family. Meyer had one rule and that was in America, Tough times are opportunities, no excuses. So I dedicate part of this to my hero, Meyer Hockenberg. The second is my grandmother, uh, Mary Zal. She left and fled persecution in Lithuania, arrived in Des Moines. She was facially scarred as a young girl. She married, had two children, my mother and an aunt. Uh, and she decided she needed to launch a business. So she signed a contract and was defrauded at the closing, was somewhat perplexed, went downtown to a friendly banker and said to this banker, here is my apron, here, is, here are my gloves, this is my collateral, I need a loan. He gave her the loan. She was successful, raised my mother and my aunt. And during one of my visits to Omaha, she inspired me with a dream. And the dream was after 2000 years, there would again be a Jewish homeland in Israel. And she said, there was a journalist, an Austrian journalist who also had a dream. And his name was Theodore Herzl. And his motto was, if you will it, there's no dream. I said, grandmother, what am I supposed to do about all this? She said, someday you'll know. Decades later, in May 1948, President Truman acknowledged and accepted the state of Israel. And that became a strategic partnership between the United States and Israel. At that moment, I remember my grandmother and I knew what to do. My family has been blessed to be the beneficiary of a great Judeo-Christian Republic of America. This Republic was created and branded by great American presidents, Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, Truman, and Reagan, and particularly memorialized by President John F. Kennedy, 
who in his inaugural address in 1961 said the memorial tribute and the absolute motto of our country, quote, do not ask what your country will do for you, but ask what you will do for your country. Tonight, I honor my hero and my heroine, and I thank each of you for this opportunity.